Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to be talking through something called saltatory conduction in myelinated neurons. Now, neurons are specialised nerve cells, and myelinated refers to those that have this protective sheath of lipid around them called myelin, known as the myelin sheath. Now, saltatory conduction is the scientific name given to the way that the action potential passes along this uh, the length of the axon down this neuron. Now, in a previous video that I've done on the passage of action potentials, I've used an image to describe the basic movement of sodium in and potassium ions out of the neuron, showing how you get regions of depolarization and repolarization. And the same applies to this particular video. The only difference is because of the myelin sheath, we get this action potential almost jumping from like one node to another, a gap between the regions of the smiling. So let's start, first of all, by stressing this image in the, uh, that you can see in the screen. This is a section of axon. So I'll just call this here. So this is an axon segment. And it's down here which we're going to propagate our nerve impulse ultimately. Now, in a myelinated neuron, we have this around them. So if I just left it as it was, that would be a non-myelinated neuron. But what I'm doing is showing regions of myelination, where we've got this fatty myelin sheath around it. So I'll just shade those in just to highlight that. So this region here is known as the myelin sheath. Excuse the quick drawing. So this region here is known as myelin sheath. And the gaps that you see between them, so just there for example, this is known as a node, or more specifically, a node of Ranvier. So that's the technical name of that region there. And as we've said, this here is the axon, which the uh, action potential is going to pass along. Now, what we said in the previous video is that sodium ions rush in to depolarize a region, and that is the case. So we're going to start off by having a region here where sodium ions rush in and depolarize this region. So having gone from a negative resting potential, we're now depolarizing this, and it's now more positive inside compared to the negative region outside. Now, because of the myelin sheath, we're not able to get this kind of localised current set up into the immediate adjacent region. So in the previous video, we were talking about myelinated neurons in the region where I just drew an asterisk here and here, just for the top and bottom, for argument's sake. We would have had a localised current set up between this particular positive charge and the negative charge that would be around where the asterisks are. But instead, we almost skip and jump over the myelin sheath and we set up an, a, a localised current or circuit at the next node. So this positive here actually ends up attracting a negative region where the next node is. So this would be positive here, this would be positive here, because in this region here, so where I've just drawn the arrow in this region at this node, remember we've got an, a region of resting potential, we've not got an action potential developed here. So we've got a positive outside relative to the minus 70 millivolt negative potential inside. And what happens is we set up a current, but not to the immediate adjacent region, but all the way from one node to another. 
And the same thing applies here at the bottom. So the current flow actually depolarizes to the next node of Ronvier. And that is what is known at the top as saltatory conduction. So this way, ultimately, we have the direction of the impulse. So we'll just make that clear. So this is the direction of the impulse. This is the direction that that action potential is being propagated in or being transmitted in. So the direction of impulse is from left to right of the screen. But rather than depolarizing adjacent regions, we say that in saltatory conduction, we get localized current set up from one node of Ronvier to another. So from one node to another node. Now let's think about the benefit of that. Not only does this speed up the transmission of the action potential, but it also means that we don't have to generate an action potential along the entire length of the neuron, and that's really crucial. In many exam questions, they ask the benefit of saltatory conduction. And aside from the fact that it allows localised currents to be set up from node to node, allows the action potential just to be generated from node to node, but it also, as a third mark, means that you don't have to generate an action potential, or ultimately you don't have to have waves of depolarization along the entire length of the axon. You just have periods of depolarization purely in these regions, in the nodes of Ronvier. Now you might ask, how can you tell from this diagram that this fatty sheath of myelin acts as some kind of electrical insulator? That's a question that I commonly get asked, and you can see that where this red myelin sheath is, we don't have any electric current set up. If it's going from node to node, then we don't have any form of electrical transmission, if you like. So this region of red, this myelinated area of the neuron, acts as an electrical insulator. Now, localised currents arise, as I said, between adjacent nodes of Ronvier, allowing this action potential to jump from node to node, and we've called that saltatory conduction. And we've said what that means in terms of the speed of the impulse. But one thing to note is how that affects the size of the impulse. And it's really crucial to note that it doesn't. It does not affect the size of the impulse, only the speed so the size of the impulse, ultimately, is the same. It just affects the speed. Another aspect to consider is how the strength of the stimulus can affect the frequency of the impulse. Now, clearly, for that case, the stronger the stimulus, the more frequent this impulse would be uh, occurring, the more frequent this action potential would be sent and generated down the length of this axon. So the strength of the stimulus would affect its frequency, but when we have saltatory conduction, just to be aware that it does affect the speed, but it doesn't affect the size of the impulse. That remains fixed. Now, the final thing to comment on is about the leakage of ions. Now, what we find is that the greater the diameter of the axon, so the greater, ultimately, this distance here, the diameter the greater the speed of conductance. And the question I often get asked is, well, why? Why would that happen? And it's all to do with the leakage of ions and the fact that you get less leakage of ions. I've said in a previous video about maintaining rest and potential and generating an action potential, that even though we're actively pumping three ciliums out and two potassiums in to a neuron, some of that potassium leaks out and some of the sodium leaks in, almost doing the opposite. And the membrane is much more permeable to potassium, so we get a lot of leakage of ions, and that would affect the membrane potential at any given time. So if we have less leakage, it, means we, it just means we can maintain that potential and that ultimately that electrochemical gradient just a little bit easier. Because we're maintaining the potential inside and outside of this neuron to a greater degree, it just means we're able to speed up the uh, rate of conductance of this action potential. So it's just a side note, but 
There we have a little bit of information about saltatory conduction in myelinated neurons. These are neurons with a myelin sheath, fatty sheath around them, with gaps called nodes of Ranvier, and we find that waves of depolarization cause sodium, cause sodium channels to open, sodium will rush in, and that sets up localized currents between one node and another node further along the length of the axon, and it's that that will trigger subsequent waves of depolarization. So ultimately we're getting a quicker, faster action potential sent down the length of the neuron. Okay, hope all that helps.